Hello and welcome back to another vlog. It is Wednesday. I'm pretty sure it's Wednesday. Yeah, it's it's Wednesday. I it's actually 1:15. I'm just now heating up something for lunch. The rest of my pita chips and spinach dip from uh, Longhorn. I've been working for like an hour and a half, two hours on Amazon ads for my books. I just released the 2024 editions of Beginner's Guide to eBay, Beginner's Guide to Amazon KDP, and Beginner's Guide to YouTube. So they are up. And then I have other books um, for fourth quarter, guided journals that I published under my pen name, Jean Lee. So I've been trying to like do a bunch of new ads just to maximize the potential of sales because especially for those guided ancestry journals that I do, they do best in December. So I'm kind of just like positioning hopefully to have maximum sales in December. I'm a little blurry eyed, but, oh my gosh, I gotta show you the dogs are so Look cute. at these two. Oh, how cute. You're so cute sitting there together. Yeah, they're like, you got food in the kitchen. So that's why we're here. Uh-huh, food. You had your food already. You're gonna have yours later though. Yeah, you get plenty to eat. Yeah, you like food though, don't you? Yeah, we like food and treats and toys. Yes, you do. Oh, you're so cute. You're so cute sitting there, Charlie and Teddy. Charlie and Teddy, Charlie and Teddy, so cute. Back to me, who's not cute. So now I am going to, I'm just gonna go ahead and prep dinner. I am making porcupine meatballs, which is a family recipe we've had for years. However, I've only recently started to question if they're actually porcupine meatballs and actually Swedish meatballs that my family somehow got the name confused. Because I have had a couple people tell me, so this is it's ground beef, rice, and then a sauce with cream and mushroom soup and sour cream and paprika. It's very basic. And I've had people say, well, porcupine meatballs have a red sauce. I was like, that's weird. And then I was looking at Swedish meatballs, which have like the cream sauce. I'm like, are these Swedish meatballs? I don't know. We call them porcupine meatballs. We've had them in our family forever. So I'm going to make a batch of those. They're fantastic leftovers. So this will be days and days of dinner for me, which I'm very excited about because I can eat the same thing day after day after day. And then I don't have to cook or go and eat, get anything. So I'm going to go ahead and prep. Well, I'm going to eat my lunch first and then I'll prep the porcupine. They might actually be Swedish meatballs. We'll see. So here's the recipe as my parents had it. Um, you can see it's just mushroom soup, ground beef, rice, and then the paprika. And you just like, my dad would make the meatballs and then we'd have a sauce. But years ago, we st he stopped frying the meatballs and we just put them in the oven. And so that's what I do now. So they're just, you know, less greasy. So we just basically bake it. And I'm honestly thinking of not even doing meatballs. I might just put it in a pan, almost like a casserole, which I have done before. So we shall see. And now Charlie thinks there's something under there. Do you have to go outside again? We'll go outside again, okay? Okay. Okay, so first thing we do is we drain the uh, cream of mushroom soup to get all the little bits of mushroom out because I can't stand them. And my dad always did this for me my entire life. He always strained it for me. And, ooh, they're gross in there. Ugh. The key to this recipe for me is the rice sauce ratio heavily outweighs the meat, like four to one. Four parts rice and sauce to one part meat. So even though it's only one pound ground beef, um, and the way we make it, I make a ton of extra rice and sauce, and that's how it stretches so far. So I'm gonna probably do at least, I've done a family size and a regular, I'll probably do another one, because again, lots and lots of sauce. Okay. In my effort to be prepared, I have screwed up. I needed quick rice, and that's not quick rice. But the boil in the bag is 10 minutes. I wonder if I use the boil in the bag rice in the casserole, because you do add water, if that will work versus the long grain. Although they look the same, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I feel like, I don't know. I'm gonna try this and just add more water. <laughs> Let's see what happens. How long do you have to cook this for? 20 minutes. 
Ooh. I mean, I could cook it, although that would be weird. Crap. I guess the one thing, I could make the meatball without the rice in it and just make the rice as a side. I don't know how that would work. Shoot, I really don't want to go and have to go buy rice. Gosh darn it. I gotta think. Okay, I'm just gonna make the meatballs without the rice mixed in um, because we'll just make it as a side. So, because the instant rice would cook in the meat and whatever. So, we'll just try it without it. I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll, we'll see. Okay, so without the rice in there, it is so soupy. I'm tempted to open a bag of the quick rice and put it in, but I just don't know. I just don't know. I mean, boil in the bag is technically maybe the, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna try it, we're gonna try it. I mean, it's just meat, it's just gonna have to cook. Maybe it'll have to cook a little longer. Ugh, what a mess. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is the biggest disaster. <laughs> I made way too much sauce. I don't know what I was thinking, I'm way too much. And I had to guess on the measurements, so there's that. I took one bag of rice out and mixed it in with the ground beef, so that's cooking. Then the other three bags I've put in here, then I'm gonna put the meat in here when I'm sure it's cooked. I don't know, it's a mess. Um, and then I keep the sauce separate because the rice will just soak up the sauce and then you need more sauce. So, I mean, if I end up like not using all the sauce, I could use all this. I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but anyway, I could freeze it. And, or I could just buy some more rice because now I'm out of the bags of rice and just keep eating all of it. I also hard boiled some eggs because the eggs I have in the fridge say that they were best by September something, uh, but they, they're still fine when I crack them. I was gonna make these cookies, but it says you need a half cup of shortening. I don't have a half cup of shortening. I mean, I feel like what if I just used one cup of margarine, but then why did they put short? It makes you think, well, shortening's in there for a reason. So I'm now making a new list of things that I need to get that I don't have. So try to use what you have, but then you do get to a point where it's like you don't have what you what you need. So anyway, this will be fine. It'll be fine, won't it, boys? They're so mad at me for being in here. They're like, well, you guys sit down. You need to sit down, Mom. Oh, you guys are so cute. I love you. I love you. <laughs> okay, so there's the meat mixture cooked with the bit of rice I added in. And then I'm gonna put this on top of that and then it can cool off. <laughs> okay, so my mushy meat mixture, <laughs> I'm just gonna mix it in to all of the rice and then it'll just cool. So yeah, it's mushy already and then it's gonna get reheated every time I eat it, but it looks right, you know, I mean, it's not in the meatball form, but the consistency looks right, the sauce looks right. You know, it's it's a simple ingredient recipe. It's not like it's super complex anyway. It's just the soup and the meat and rice. So it's just cooking it quickly. <laughs> okay, well, there we go. Can't believe I'm showing this. But I smushed all the meat and rice to one side and put all that sauce over there. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, it's only me eating it. It's not like I have to impress anybody. So I don't have the stuff to make the cookies, but I do have to make Muddy Buddies. I always made puppy chow using Crispix, but my niece had made some using the Chex Mix, this recipe, at my nephew's birthday party, and I just really liked it. So I made some a couple weeks ago, but I'm gonna make some more. So I'm just using the rice checks, semi-sweet chips, peanut butter, some margarine, some vanilla, and then powdered sugar. I have more than this, but anyway, I'm gonna make that. It'll be quick and easy. So basically there's 15 cups of cereal in the box. So I'm just gonna make basically make a double batch because I don't want half a bag of cereal open. So I'm just gonna double the other the other ingredients. Okay, so I may have put a little too much sugar in, but it's okay, it's fine. Everything is fine, everything's fine. Teddy, everything is fine. Did I spill powdered sugar all before? Yes, but it's clean and everything's fine. Yes, everything's fine. <laughs> Phew, I am a bit of a mess from the mess I made in the kitchen and then had to clean up. But 
Um, now it is time to do some Etsy orders. So my Etsy sticker and magnet shop. The first order is from Brooke in Florida. She is a repeat customer. Thank you so much, Brooke. She's getting two of the black and white haunted house magnets, four of the pop art jack-o'-lantern, one of the made in the 80s, two of the gingerbread butterflies, and then she's getting three of the blue butterfly matte stickers. I miscounted. Brooke's getting five of the pop art jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. This is why I double check. So five of these. I had a sale for one of the holographic Georgia stickers. Also had an order for one of the Day of the Dead cat magnets. So before I pull the last order, I'll show you some um, new magnets I just got in. This, These are different variations of the pop art cat. So we kind of have the green, the purple, this is like a peachy pink, and then more of a, like a yellowy rainbow one. So that these four have been added. And I got in more of the pumpkin spice latte magnets more of the uh, the green deer magnets, more of the holographic Americana carousels, and more of the, so what is that, a sunflower sticker, good grief. I haven't been ordering much, but I'd ordered, this. these have come in over the past like week and I just got around to opening them, so anyway. <laughs> These are all now in stock. Okay, now we'll do Shelly's order from Illinois. She is a repeat customer, so thank you so much, Shelly. And she actually got one each of the new Pop Art Cat magnets, so one in each color. And then she also got the cute um, Christmas Cat magnet. And a lot of people who are shopping right now are using the exclusive discount code. You can get it in my Facebook group or if you're signed up to my newsletter. Um, both of them are linked below the video, so if you want to get the exclusive discount codes that are even better than the discount on Etsy, right now it's buy three, save 30%, but there's a better code if you're in my Facebook group um, and or sign up for the newsletter. If you join the Facebook group, it's right there. If you subscribe to the newsletter, you'll have to wait for the next one to come around, so Facebook is always the best way to get it fast. So my dinner may have looked like a hot mess, but it is really good. But you can let me know, are these porcupine meatballs or Swedish meatballs? Either way, my mushy meat and rice mess with sauce is very good. It is about 9.20 and I've been working on Amazon ads and working on more digital products for my second Etsy shop. But I did have another um, Etsy sticker shop order, and it's one of the Christmas gingerbread houses. This is the matte sticker. I have a holographic sticker and this available as a magnet, but this one, uh, somebody ordered one of the stickers. Oh my gosh, it is the next day. It is Thursday, and I'm out here at Blessed Sacrament Church for their big sale. Um, you know how me, I normally don't go when things open, but I was like, you know what, I'm going to get up. I'm going to come. I'm going to go. It's 845. I just pulled into the parking lot. I think I got the last parking spot and there's a huge line. I hate crowds. Oh gosh. So yeah, I think they'll open the doors at nine and that's when I'll get out of my car. And you know, you got the nosy people that just want to see everything. You probably got some resellers that like want sneakers and stuff. So I'm a little frightened. I can't even see it from here. The line is so long, but anyway, I don't know if I'll film at all in there. I'm really, it's really hard for me to film out in public. You know, listen, I am getting older and I need to pay attention to where I'm walking, what I'm doing. So to like grab the phone, film, it's just getting difficult. I mean, I'll try to get a little shot of it, but we'll see. It's also been rainy a little, so. Well, I think my brother's here somewhere, but I don't know. Ducking in this corner. <laughs> God, crazy. I see holiday ahead. Oh boy. Okay, just got home. Oh my gosh. The time I got out of there, it was raining. The parking lot was insane trying to get out. Oh my gosh, but... Um, before I show you what I got, I do have a couple Etsy orders I need to get out in the mail today. So first is from Angelica uh, in Ohio, one of my best customers. Thank you so much, Angelica. She is getting a big magnet order. She's got the one of the snowmen, the penguin, two of the otters, four of the Halloween carousels, 
four of the Halloween Ferris wheels and five of the gingerbread haunted houses. And then I also had an order from Brenda in California, another repeat customer, and um, also left me a nice note on Etsy. It says her son, Bronson, loves seeing the puppies. Hi, Bronson. Six years old, how cute. And they have a pug in these named Peaches, a pug in these. So a pug and um, whatever the other breed is. Okay, Brenda, let me just show their order. She's like, what are you doing, lady? Okay, we've got a Wyoming magnet, a Colorado magnet, the I Can Do Hard Things matte sticker, the new Christmas mouse magnet, and the new otter magnet. So my new floor lamp that I ordered from Amazon just came just to give me light to take pictures. This is kind of neat. It, you just roll, um, scroll your finger along this bar to change the frequency and the settings. And um, also comes with a remote control. So that will allow me to take pictures up here in uh, my dad's room and then I can bring my laptop in and list them. But let me show you what I got at the church sale. I think there was only one thing I paid more than a dollar for and it was this paper mache Kurt Adler Santa. Um, everything else I think was a dollar. So there's another paper mache Kurt Adler. This is a, just a Christmas jar, but anything that is in the box, vintage, it's Carlton, made in the USA. Um, I found the Snickers bucket. I found the Milky Way. I've never, I don't think I've ever found the Snickers before. A um, couple little Lennox piece, or Limax pieces. Christmas Villages, a little angel. This is, is this Limax or just a little tie? I don't know. Just little things. This is Lemax. Put it like in a lot, maybe. This is a vintage train candle holder. They have a table up by the checkout where they said that puts their antiques and things. You know what's on the table? Boyd's Bears and Cherished Teddies. Oh, no, it's Cherished Teddies. So many Cherished Tables. There are some other things, but it was a lot of Cherished Teddies. I remember the last time they had sale, the Cherished Teddies were there, too. Someone needs to tell them that the cherished teddies are not, they're just not cherished. Some Hallmark ornaments, just because I, you know, there were more. Like I said, I might go back tomorrow. Um, this is another Lemax. This is a vintage Thanksgiving die cut. I didn't know if these were vintage or not. These just little Halloween things. So they were a dollar for the bag. Some more of these little candles with the kittens. That one's got a bear. Oh, so you've got an angel, a bear, and a cat. Aw, aw. Another, this is a Halloween keepsake ornament. This is an action wind sock. It screams, it shakes. It's made in Taiwan. More Lemax, little dog, Hallmark, Fitz and Floyd, a uh, salt and pepper shaker, a Hallmark, or no, I'm sorry, Coca-Cola, good grief. This is a vintage Gibson, it's a bell, but if it's vintage, I just can't help myself. It's a little doll, dolls of all nations. I mean, she's only a dollar. Which one are you? You are the doll with the red bowy things in your hair. Oh, you're Germany. Well, you're not on the, oh no, there you are. There you are, Germany. And what's in here? Okay, it's Honko. It's Honko Halloween. A couple little made in Japan angel um, little candles. This is a made in Japan piece. And uh, oh, a Nico, Deb Moore's, uh, just a little dish. And then this is a vintage blow mold cat bank save with the cat and it is um union 1981 so how fun is that i've never seen that before so anyway my little haul none nothing you know crazy but i'll go back tomorrow stuff you know is more cleared out and see if there's anything left that i might want to get but like i said i was really focused on the holiday stuff and there was so much of it and there were a lot of people in there. So I was trying, I was just going for the obvious stuff, you know, like, okay, I know that's vintage. And so I, it was very hard um, to look. So 
Anyway, but I'm happy with what I got.